Hey class, um, today we're working on the five portraits into one project and uh, we want to start with an initial sketch idea and I've done a little drawing in Photoshop with a pen and uh, it's this crazy mad scientist and I figured I'd make a mad scientist with a background of some um, electrical parts and pipes and wires and things. So I'm shooting my photographs, or actually I'm sourcing photographs from a shoot that I did uh, a number of years ago of various portraits of friends uh, in my master's program, and uh, also some photographs that I have from various trips that I've made. So here's my mad scientist. So my source material is, here's an interior with some pipes. Next is a, uh, this is a dynamo uh, from probably the turn of the century, uh, 1910 or so up in New York. Uh, Ted Lewin, who's a uh, very famous illustrator. Uh, he was kind enough to pose for a few photographs. So you'll see Ted. Here's a very nice portrait of Ted up close. Um, those of you that are shooting your own photographs, as you all should be, but uh, notice there's two light sources. One is much more powerful and a different color. Uh, it's an orangey, uh, very warm color on the right hand side and on the left is a cool white. Um, that creates some really great dynamics and you'll notice the darkest part is right down the center where the two lights um, would, would meet. That's yours truly. I was uh, part of this same photo shoot. So um, I'm going to be using parts of this one. My friend Yang Chen, very famous uh, watercolorist, does some great work, but here he is with a bowler hat. This is a uh, lecture I attended. Um, this fellow had done um, portraits uh, in the um, courtroom, and he was given a lecture. The um, as you can see, there's a portrait of Michael Jackson behind him. It was the, he was uh, the artist that did the Michael Jackson trial, also the Mar the Manson trial, not Marilyn Manson, but uh, Charles Manson trial. Um, here's another photo. Here's Ted again. Here's uh, my master's head, who happens to be Murray Tinkleman, and you'll notice Murray is lit by that same orange light on the right hand side. Yet on his left hand side we had a green gel, so you got a really creepy kind of color there going on on Murray's portrait. And you can do this with paper. You can take a uh, hot light, such as a spotlight of some sort, and some construction paper that's colored and bounce the light off of the paper. And it will actually illuminate your subject with a reflected light that is of the color of the paper. So it's something you might want to try. All right, so I've got my creepy drawing, and I need to start putting things in um, and create one one portrait out of multiple pieces. So who was, uh, let's go with our lecturer here. I kind of, I like his uh, jacket, so I'm going to use his jacket as the basis of my um, mad scientist. So first off he's facing the wrong direction so I'm going to go into Photoshop tools um, into edit and edit and I'm going to oh I do have to ha have my uh, active activate this layer with with the portrait over here on the right uh, my tools are off the screen on a different screen I have a two screen system so you'll have to just trust what I'm doing here so I go edit transform and I want to do um, flip horizontal and there he goes he flipped horizontal he's now facing right which is if we turn on my mad scientist notice mad scientist face right now we've got our portrait facing right also and all we really need out of this fellow is his coat so how do we get the coat well, we have the background activated and we can move it around. I'm just going to clip the coat with the magic wand tool. And I'm, I'm using the magic wand tool, which is the third tool down. 
and I'm just going to click along the seam where the coat meets the background. I want to go up the shirt and come down the collar underneath the chin clipping along I'm just riding that edge where the coat meets the background and I can go around the outside double click and we have what's called the marching ants which is the line starts uh, vibrating which means that it's activated and I just hit delete and boom he's gone but I do have his coat so we turn on our sketch again and there's our sketch and I'm gonna try to fit the coat with scaling uh, to fit the shape of the mad scientist so now I go to edit excuse me I, I go back to my little pointer arrow which is all at the top now I go to edit transform scale and let's see if we can kind of stretch it where we need it to fit close enough is good enough on this because the neck is different you know my my drawings kind of cartoony and we have to do account for that and double click and it deactivates next is a head I'm going to use um, the portrait of uh, Ted as my basis because this is a the biggest piece I have as far as portraiture goes um, and also it's very clear it's got some great color to it so I'm going to use Ted's head as my basis and on this one I'm gonna do a little different I'm gonna to try to um, let's see let's see if the magic wand tool which is the fourth tool down uh, with a tolerance of one I'm gonna see if I can click on this and activate what it did is it activated a lot of the uh, color inside of his face a lot of that dark shadow I don't want to get rid of that so I may not use that tool I'm going to try to use um, I think I'll use that that same the same lasso tool which is our third tool down and this time I'm just going to click around Ted's head and I'm moving very fast here um, you may want to move slower for accuracy and coming up his neck grab his ear oops got a little sideways there on that ear and double click and now his head is activated what I can do is either hit copy and just copy this and then paste it or I can go under um, edit let's see not pardon me let's see mode adjustments under image adjustments there's the invert and we can do some pretty wild things like turning him into a almost like a ghostly figure um, do I want to do that necessarily at this point no but it may be something I push later down the road so I'm going to hit control Z and undo that action I'm going to copy it which is uh, command C for those of you on a Mac or control C those of you on PCs deselect it by command D and then command V V is in Victor to paste it boom now I got two heads of Ted notice one two one two over on the right this is now called back 
layer two, I could just rename this to Ted Head. I always try to name my layers if I can so that I know what they are rather than trying to rely on the tiny little picture. And I can shut off the old one. Now I've got Ted's head and the background of the uh, copy which is uh, our coat and lapel. And now I'm going to turn back on my drawing. And now see how small the head is in my drawing? I have to shrink Ted's head and maybe even tilt it to fit. So I'm make sure that I'm on the layer that's Ted's head. And I'm going to say edit, transform. And for this one, I'm actually going to say distort. Now distort is a little different than regular size transformation. I can actually grab each corner of the box and shape Ted's head to fit as needed rather than just scaling. You'll notice how his face, I'm gonna shut off that. Here we go, moving his head up. I may wanna have the jaw a little bigger. It's looking kind of weird, I know, but um, I'm actually distorting his head, and his head's uh, taking on a new shape. Okay, double click. Shut off the drawing. As you can see, it's getting really weird, but uh, you know this is uh, the fun that you have with Photoshop. Now, what I can do also is take the coat and put it over the top. And now he's got his little head sticking out of his collar, which is very natural. However, I know that Ted's chin most likely would be hanging out. So what I can do is put his background, this uh, coat, let me double click and rename that to coat and shirt. Or coat and shirt is the name of this layer now. So I'm going to put that on a little transparency. So we go to opacity and knock it back a little bit to, oh, uh, let's say 54%. And I'm going to start to erase the collar where Ted's chin is overhanging it. So I go to my eraser tool, which is roughly halfway down. It's a little square. And this particular eraser shape is, uh, it's a specialty brush that I've actually created um, out of a photograph. So it's it's going to erase, but at a, it's not a square or round item. Okay, now, I just erased the chin line, right where Ted's chin meets the collar, or overhangs the collar. And I go back to the shirt and coat and put that back to 100%. And there, now Ted's chin is overhanging the collar edge. That's good, that's what I'm looking for. Um, let's turn on Murray, who's our green face. There's Murray's green face. And I'm going to see if I can take some of, uh, something like maybe Murray's, hmm, what does Murray have that I want? Let's try his nose, his green nose. See if we can use that. And on this one, I'm going to use the uh, ellipse tool just to select his nose area on his face. And I'm hitting Command C, copy. Command D to deselect the copy area. And I'm shutting off Murray's layer. And I'm hitting V, Victor, for the nose. And you see, Murray's nose has now popped out. And I can take Murray's nose and stick it on Ted's face. And I'm going to erase with my erase tool. That square item there. I'm going to erase Murray's eye. Beneath. I know it kind of looks like a clown, but... Now, you notice Ted's nostrils kind of sticking out there. So I'm going to try something with my um, smudge tool, or actually uh, perhaps 
yeah, the smudge tool, which is a, it looks like a finger, and I can adjust the size of it. Maybe we'll make it a bigger, bigger smudger at uh, maybe 70 pixels or so, and that, that's actually a little small for this. I'm using working at 300 dots per inch, so it's a large image. Let's try 100. And I'm actually going to move Murray's nostril to cover Ted's nostril. Do you see that? I'm actually able to stretch things around here and prod things to go where I want them to go. Now he's got a green nose on his blue face. There's the bad guy. Now, maybe his nose isn't big enough. Maybe i got to keep growing that nose. Let's uh, transform it one more time. Nose here. Edit. Transform. Scale. Well, let's go distort again. Let's use that again. Grab a corner and grow it. I know it looks very strange, but I like comics, so this is uh, this is right in line with what I do. Um, and I'm going to erase a little bit here, clean that up. That'll work. Okay. Now, Young, what do we have on Young that we can pull? I kind of like his eyes looking sideways. You see that? Um, it's very close. To, you see the the mad scientist has got kind of a sideways look looking at us as does Yang. I'm gonna move um, in real close and see if I can grab Yang's eyes and I'm using the same lasso tool and what I'm doing is for this is I'm just actually making a uh, selection of only his eyeball region like a set of glasses. I'm hitting Command C to copy, Command D to unselect or deselect, and V Victor to paste. So now I've got eyeballs, which are layer three, which I'm going to call E Y E S eyes. And we're going to make them much larger than they are. So we edit, transform scale, and if we want, we can actually go up top, uh, up here and transform scale. You'll notice width by height. Uh, I can actually make those 300% uh, of what they are, rather than 100%. And let's see if we, yes, we want to apply that transformation. Oh gosh, you know what I did, guys? I actually selected the eyes from the the eye shape, but I had um, I think I had Ted's nose as my active area. So I got to go backwards in time here, or just delete this particular one, uh, which I just take and drop in my dra trash can there. Uh, back to Yong. Make sure I'm clicked on Yong's layer. Okay, come on, Paul. Here we go. Selecting the eyeballs. Do, do. Control C, Control D, Control V. Now I have eyes. I name it eyes. E Y E S. I want to transform the size from one hundred percent. Transform to scale of 300, maybe it may actually be as much as 400%. Let's try four, see what that gives us. Yeah, that looks good. Apply, and uh, Yang's eyes are facing the other way, so I'm going to edit 
transform and flip horizontal. There he is. He's looking back now. And perhaps I could transform these again and bring them in a little tighter. Edit, um, adjust, let's see. No, I'm not going to adjust. We're just going to transform again. So edit, transform, scale. And I'm just going to pull the widths in a little bit. And that looks okay. Now, I'm going to change the opacity on Yong's eyes so that they will be something that I can erase to here. Change to my eraser tool. And we start in. Ted's got some really nice shadows around his eyes and I'm going to use those as still part of the basis of this drawing. Now put these eyes back on 100% and see where we're at. Yeah that doesn't look creepy. Great it works. That was uh, sarcasm. So now I want to take some of this Murray color, which is this green, and I'm actually going to source it with my eyedropper tool and actually pick up a sample. Eyedropper tool is the fifth tool down from the top, and I'm going to go out in the field here and uh, I'm going to pick up that green. And if you notice, it, there's this super bright green here on the right. And then I'm going to pick up a paintbrush, but I have ra uh, quite a few tools here. Um, I have a uh, few brushes that I've created. Um, one is a fog brush, and I'm actually going to create a new layer, which is if we look down here in the lower right hand corner, there is a um, page with a corner turned back. The lower left hand corner is turned up. That is how you create a layer. And I'm actually going to just start painting in a little green over top of Ted's face. And then I'm going to erase away everything that's not that is overlapping Ted's face. So I don't want it in the background. And I don't want that green over the shirt. So I'm getting rid of that. I don't want it on the coat. And it's a little intense, so I'm going to change this from a normal layer, and I'm probably going to try the multiply. See what happens there. Oh, yeah, that works. Multiply or color burn. Multiply works well. So I get that same green that's going on with Murray's face but it's now over top of Ted's face. By taking that green, uh, putting it on, the, uh, on a new layer, and then changing that layer to multiply here. And I'm going back, <coughs> and I notice some, some overlap here into the white. Okay, my mad scientist, he's getting madder and madder. Um, so I've got Yong's eyes, I've got Murray's nose and Murray's green pallor, and I've got Ted's head, as well as the hat and coat from uh, the lecturer. So I've got four of my people together here. Now, do we want me? Hmm. Now let's see who else we have. There's Ted again. <laughs> I love that piece, but uh, I'm not going to use that one either. Let's see. Who else do we have? Let's see. How can we use this one? I'm going to move this one up. She's got a camera. She's got a hat. She does have a nice hairline. I wonder if I could use that. 
thinking here, thinking. Let's try that. Let's just grab the hair. And I'm using my lasso tool. And I'm clicking along her hairline. And it's got a nice spiky edge to it. And you can be much more careful than I'm being. I'm doing this very quickly for this particular lecture, and I, I do have to keep it short enough for YouTube. So here we go. We got hair. I'm hitting Control C, Control D, Control V again. There, I've got hair. I shut that off, and there's the hair. Okay, I'm going to transform this one too. I think distort will be great again. So edit, transform distort and we're going to try to put this wig on Ted's head boy that's not strange too much Okay, that's looking kind of weird, but that'll work. Um, I'm going to then soften the edges with a little bit of a um, little bit of the eraser, but I'm going to set the eraser's opacity down to I'd say 50% or 40%, and just kind of roll that edge, roll over it, and it will soften that hard clipped edge that I had. Perhaps you can see that it's kind of softening up there, and perhaps over his face is softening a little bit. And I can adjust the size of this brush. This brush is currently at 226 pixels wide, which is way big. However, I can shrink that down and, and have it do uh, much more fine detail. But especially items like hair, um, the light where it turns in space it's usually very soft light because the light is diffracting through many many little strands of hair and it creates a soft edge not just because the hair is soft but visually the light is reacting differently as it goes around the form it's reacting differently than it would as if this was a, um, a steel ball um, turning in space the hair is a softer product and light is uh, behaving differently around it. Okay, now we've got part of Ted's head um, underneath there that I think needs some black. So I'm going to go to, let's see, the coat and shirt layer are above it. So I'm going to take the hair color that we just sourced from our, our young model, grab that dark color, and using the brush again, but I'm not going to use that large, large brush. I'm going to use a smaller brush this time. Um, I'm going to pick a oh, 63. Yeah, 63 will work. And I start painting the edge here. So Ted's hair now is... Looking a little closer. I'm going to throw a little bit of hair back here around Ted's ear. And okay, that kind of works. He's looking a little more uh, Hollywood than I'd like, but I think it's going to have to go because if you look. This looks kind of zany, uh, and it is a sketch, but uh, it's what I'm working with, and I'm working towards. Um, I don't have things like the pocket protector here, uh, although I do have some machinery for that I'm going to use in the background. Uh, the photographs joined together are going to be something totally different than what my drawing is, uh, but it's not that... Um, I'm trying to make it different. It's just that they're two different medias. Um, medium of pencil and pen versus the medium of photography. 
the photography is going to have uh, go off in a different direction, but I'm trying to shoehorn those products into um, a workable solution here and, and uh, have this sketch actually become something on its own. So I'm going to then take, uh, let's see, some piping. Let's try that. Let's put those pipes up and we'll shut off our sketch but let's put the pipes below Ted. Okay, that works. And let's see if we can use some of these, uh, these things like over here with the, um, the circuit boards and such and see what we can do with those. Let's uh, grab them with our select tool. And I'm going to try to keep it in perspective as best I can. So I'm going to control C. Oops, got to make sure I'm on the right, the right layer here. Control C, control D to deselect, control V for Victor to paste. And here we've got those great bank of electronics. And I shut off that one. And I'm going to drop this down and control. Let's see, let's transform this again, which is a uh, edit, transform, and I'm going to again use distort because I need this to go into a different perspective. So I'm actually going to change the perspective of the photograph. And you see, it's it's now become almost a wall and a ceiling, which is exactly what I was hoping for. And now let's shut off all our TED pieces. And you'll see what it is. It's actually an interior. The original is an interior of a... Uh, school I used to teach at uh, Montgomery College um, and I placed this circuit board or not circuit board but a uh, board full of circuits <laughs> uh, from the electric company and Ted and all his Ted pieces are then overlaying and hair now I kind of like what's going on. I'm going to try to put a uh, layer of maybe dark dark fog or something uh, over the background to kind of knock that back and still keep that mood, that eerie mood. So I'm going back into my large brush with black and I'm going to start just very lightly Putting in some spooky light here with dark colors. However, I'm going to also maximize that spooky mood and see if I can put some green glow on some of these objects in the background. So I'm going to find that green. I'm just using a color picker this time rather than sourcing from the photograph. And I'm going to try to throw some green light here and there. Flow is uh, very subtle now, so I'm just going to throw a little bit of green light up above. And... Uh, Let's see, I think this this whole collar shirt thing is maybe just a little too out of step. So maybe uh, drop the color here and I'm going to put a new layer and just overlay some green on this new layer. See if that helps. Whoops, I see what's going on. There we go. 
and then erase where I don't want it. See, my eraser tool is kind of weak. Um, I am going to have to uh, enlarge the size here and get the opacity to 100%. So I'm going to raise the size of my eraser brush and continue on here erasing. Okay, it's looking good. All right. There we go. Glowing Ted, the crazy mad scientist. Light green shirt. It works. It's not great, but it works. Um, let's see. There was a little bit of that color going on. Let's see if we can throw some white in there. Little white highlights here and there. Make things pop. And of course, every mad scientist needs tubes and wires that are popping and zapping and maybe some electricity arcing behind him some wires hanging in the up above anything like that just to help boost that mood Okay, I think I'm coming to a close on this. But you get the idea. Multiple images used to create a final. Now I'm throwing some of those same white flecks now into the eyeballs. So he just looks more and more crazy. But um, this is Ted Lewin as a crazy scientist. Now, um, there's my original drawing. It's close, but it's not the same. But it this has its own unique flavor now. It's not the sketch. It's something else. So, I hope you like it. Good luck with yours. I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys do. See ya.